Hello, I'm Chris Williams, and I'm here with yet another review. This time we're doing Prisoner X, Issue 2. And we'll start off with the cover. The cover was bet by Patch Zig Zitcher and Brian Reber. It's a good cover, showing Polaris going wild, using her magnetic powers, powers to trash the dining area. Now, this is something that doesn't actually happen inside the comic book at all. So this cover is a lie. Though the artwork is good, I'll give you that much. But this scene does not happen. Or at least in the scene with the fight in the cafeteria does not play out like this. Polaris does absolutely nothing in it. We see uh, great artwork. We see everyone panicking as she goes, goes nuts and starts flinging food around. I really like this cover, even if it is a lie. And we start with the first page. I am getting tired of first of uh, of of them starting comic books with generic comic book pages instead of a full page spread. Here we have Forge, the warden of uh, the Danger Room prison complex, talking to Psylocke, the commander of the extremists. Now, <clears throat> she is worried about Bishop and whether or not they can control him and, uh, and uh, that he has broken protocol by engaging in an, in an illegal relationship with Jean Grey. Now, they've taken him out, hopefully, hopefully to rehabilitate him here in the prison. Com prison. But uh, Forge says that he has a plan and uh but, but Psylocke isn't quite sure sure she can trust it she is more or less being the typical com uh evil commander of a evil team of black ops specialists here we see forge looking over bishop's file while spying on him on the cameras <sighs> this is a rather boring coloring, I'll tell you that much. It just seems like it's not really popping out. Here we see Bishop asking around who get, who gave him the letter the letter he got at the end of the last issue saying everything is a dream. Now the artwork here is really good. I like the like this page or at least this these panels showing everyone laughing at him and playing keep away with it. But it, uh, if anything it does show that the that everyone here is a bit of a jerk. Later on, Bishop goes gets the letter back and continues on his search. Here he finds Polaris acting like a goober. They're really trying to play up her madness by saying that she's turning pages with her nose and while Bishop asks what she's doing or, or asks sickly, um, are you flipping those pages with your nose? While Gabby says, you can't really talk to her. She's all nuts. Well, she didn't used to be, but, but they tried something on her. Well, something happened to her and she lost her mind. At first, Gabby is just a little little uh, punk being all, I'm a little girl. And this is, uh, is uh, annoying. Now, later on in the mess hall where the, where, the fi where the fight I mentioned earlier was going to happen, what happens is Bishop can t tries to make peace with Beast, but Beast is not having any of it. And they get into a scuffle. Beast, even though he doesn't have powers, still has his claws. So you'd think he'd, they'd do something. The the prison guards would do something about that. But apparently, he doesn't have superhuman strength because his punch should have probably have have killed Bishop right there. But Bishop counterattacks by by arm lock by getting his arm in a lock. But Beast breaks out of it. This fight is uh, good, good, but. I still dislike it because it, at times it shows that Beast jumping into the air or really doing stuff that no ordinary human should be capable of. Uh, Beast later on says that that this is all an act and that he was getting into a fight to basically show that he was the toughest man there, there and that he only messed with Bishop to protect his friends, but also to show that he was the meanest man in the prison and he doesn't want to take no gruff from no one. But he does show that he, he's interested in the message and that he's actually a pretty decent guy. Later on, Bishop 
meets up with Diana Moonstar again, and they talk about their memories, how how in his dreams he's actually a different man, and how everyone else is different. They're not crazy or uh, or in prison. I mean, Bishop here remembers having jer jerry curls, while uh, Diana Moonstar remembers the New Mutants. How everything, how everything was nice and good in her dreams, and it and she feels that it, these aren't just figments of imagination in her dreams. That this actually happened. <sighs> All she can do is continue to talk with Bishop, while a familiar face from the last issue starts popping up. Bishop continues to say that he hears laughing, while this person ends up coming from behind, and it turns out Shard. Shard is going to make another appearance. And this is where things turn out to get even stranger with Diana Moonstar. Because guess what? Diana Moonstar also can see Shard, a character who has been dead for a while. All she can do once she sees Shard is says, I, I, ha I have to go. I can't be here. Either she remembers Shard is dead or that she remembers, remembers her from her memories. Which I don't think they've ever actually met. She might have heard about her. But if she has any of her memories back, then she knows Shard is dead. And they can, Bishop and Diana can only say Diana as she runs off. And she can, he continues to hear laughing. Then he talks to Shard. Shard just says, was it something I said? She's come here to talk with her brother. And here we come to Forge as he puts his plan in motion. He, he's talking to one of the prison guards, and they're talking, but we don't hear any dialogue. But they're apparently, they're, what they're saying is uh, important to the plot of this comic book. He look, Forge looks on, he makes his decision, and he says, do it. Well, the guard goes off. Forge is apparently a bit ashamed of what he's about to do. Maybe he has something with, to do with what, what Bishop is seeing, with Shard being back. We'll have to read on to find out. This issue is boring. It's just basically useless dialogue. Now here we come to Bishop talking to Shard, and she says she has something to show him, and then he needs to, well, at least you're consistent. You don't know you know, know where you are, or and you're making degrees. Where you? Are. She says that she is. Uh, she's going to help him, and they continue to talk, and she says that he needs. Not the time for questions, Lucas, she says. But she, but what she's going to do is help him by showing him his past selves. She apparently lured him here so that his versions of his past can help him remember who he is. You look like you could use some time to think on things when she says that. When the original Bishop, how Bishop used to look when he first appeared, appeared peers, punches Bishop in the face. And then other versions of Bishop through the years show up. One even one with missing an arm. I don't know how Bishop got his arm back, so I can't really tell you how that happened. Now, this is all good and stuff like that. And they surround him, telling him he should, should, uh, should get on with it. And Bishop says, this isn't real, this can't be real. But they say it's real enough. And, they, and Bishop starts to even remember... As everything around him begins to shift, they're in a formless void. And all Bishop can do is keep fighting back against his previous selves. Lights out for you, big man, is one of his one of his variants of him, tells him. And it turns out this has all been a dream. This is part of Forge's plan. Apparently he's not actually seen Shard, but that would but that would actually go against what happened here. He was actually talking to Diana. She somehow saw Shard. So unless he's been, Bishop's been in a dream this entire time, or this has all been, there's someone making mass illusions and everyone's seeing something different. Because he should not, he should not be able to talk to his sister and have other people actually see them talk to with each other. Which means there's a good chance there's somehow there's some using telepathic power to mess with their with his mind and with mess with everyone's mind in the prison, and it must be having it must have something to do with Forge and what he's trying to accomplish. This comic was just bland throughout the entire 
th entire issue. They didn't really do anything but talk and talk. The artwork was good, but the coloring, I would say, could be a bit better. It looks looked uh, looked washed out. Uh, they just uh, they just didn't do anything really meaningful in this comic book. This could have run in a book with all the other characters in part in the Age of X event. This didn't need to have its own comic book. I will stress again because this was boring. This is it was like the B B plot of a two-part comic book or multiple parts comic book. And that's my opinion of this issue. If you want to see it, check it out. Now, if you like this review, leave a like, subscribe, and leave some comments down below. I'll be back again tomorrow. Bye.